unconditional, unconditional love or the loyal love of God, the generosity, the loyal love of God, the enduring commitment of God. So essentially, when we talk about the ascend, the ascend wisdom of God, he's talking about the fact that God, as our Father, we always love us. And the key word is covenant love, loyal love. You know, if you have friends or people that are uh, maybe your family members or people that are um, your friends, they may hang out with you if you do well, or they may anger, no anger with you if you, do, if you don't do well. But the key thing with God is God is always, God loves us all the time. So, and that's what it means by the ex excel love. It's called, in other words, it says the loving kindness of God. The loving kindness of God. This is what we spoke about in church this morning about the fact that when the loving kindness of God to us showed up, it showed up in the person of Jesus Christ. And the love that God has for us is unconditional. The love that God has for us is unconditional. The mercy of God to us has nothing to do with what we have done and what we have not done. You know, so the ascend word of God, and what we should add consciousness this month about is ascend. The it's it's, it's reason I said was last cassette. The cassette what a love of God, which is the loyal love of God, the covenant love of God. In Psalm 136, verses 1 to 9, the Bible says, Let everyone thank God, for God is good and is easy to please. God is good and is easy to please. Why? His tender love for us continues on forever. His tender love for us continues on forever. God is easy to please. This same scripture is akin to what the Bible mentioned in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, when the Bible says that love is kind and love is easy to be entreated. This word, easy to please, is essentially the same thing that was spoken in the book of James chapter 3, uh, verse, uh, verse 17, I believe, when the Bible says that the wisdom that comes from God is easily is easy to be pleased. So you can see here that God is good and easy to please, which is the, 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 the tender love of God, is akin to the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God and his loving kindness are one and the same. Give thanks to God, our King over all gods. Why? Because his tender love for us continues on forever. Give thanks to the Lord over all lords. Why? Because his tender, loyal love for us continues on forever. So when I say to you, uh, you know, God doesn't love you anymore, that is wrong. This thing says God's love for us continues on. Give thanks to the Lord of, all, of over all lords for his love for us. His tender love for us continues on forever. Give thanks to the only miracle working God. For his tender love for us continues on forever. It's a question here about you say, Oh, um, I don't know about the miracle working God. God has not worked a miracle for me. Did you sleep yesterday and you woke up this morning? That is the miracle of God. The, you know, there are functions that go on in your bowels, in your organs, that you are oblivious of. The way all your uh, the organs in your body sort of function together like a, like a single house while you are asleep, it is because of the God who placed them there to function out. And that's why you yourself, standing here today on the 4th of June 2023, you are what? A miracle. You are a miracle. There are things that some of you have been through. That if somebody who is not rooted in Christ, you will have lost your mind. But you are still here. You are still here. Why? Because of the loyal love of God for you continues on forever. Notice here in verse 4 that this miracle working power, miracle working God, this loyal love of God for you is not dependent on what you have done. God loves you. God chose to love you. God loves you regardless of whether you love him back or you don't love him back. God loves you whether you understand or you don't understand. God loves you whether you are with him or you are not with him. God loves you. God just loves you. Why? Because God is love. Give thanks to the creator who made the heavens with wisdom. The Bible here says God made the heavens with wisdom. When we look at the, our, 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 our earth as a suspended in space, we wonder how 
such ball, such big ball, they just not fall out into the uh, oblivion, into the abyss. What is holding it there? There are things in our universe that we don't understand. There are things in our universe that we have been able to understand through the exploration of science. But there are things, there are a whole lot of things that we don't understand. The Bible says, by wisdom, God laid the foundations of the earth. So God used his wisdom to create the heavens. God used his wisdom to create the earth. So why? Because his tender love for us continues forever. Scientists have said that the, the ray of the sun and the distance of the sun to the earth was at the as exact right parameter. If it, had, if it had been closer to the earth, this earth would not have been habitable. If it had been stronger than it is, the ray from the sun will have, will have scorched all earth. God put everything what in balance, everything is created by God to function in harmony. I've shared it before in church in that in book of Proverbs chapter eight, that the, the, the fundamental rhythm or language of the universe is what is harmony, everything working together. That is what God has designed. Why? Because his tender love for us continues on forever. So he will form dry ground, raising it up from the sea. His tender love for us continues on forever. Praise the one who created every heavenly light. His tender love for us continues on forever. Essentially, you, you have these stars in the night, each one of them doing their job, doing their work. Why? Because God ordained it like that. There's nothing in this universe there's nothing in our world that God has created that is a mistake. Not one thing is a mistake. Everything that God has created was created to function in harmony with everything else. Why? Because the fundamental rhythm of the universe is harmony. So the Bible here says we should praise the one who created every heavenly light. He set the sun in the sky to rule over the day his tender love continues on forever. Praise him who set, the, the, who set in place the moon and starts to rule over the night. Why? Because his tender love for us continues on forever. So this month, the Lord will press upon my heart about the need to understand this loving kindness of God. The fact that God will always love you. God will never stop loving you. But there's something that God wants us to pay attention to this month which is about the wisdom of God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all you're getting, get understanding. So today I'm going to be praying. I'm going to ask us to pray for wisdom. Why do you need to pray for wisdom? Where the Bible says to us that you can ask for wisdom. If there's any area of your life where you are not, you're not, um, where wisdom is not really working for you, or where you lack wisdom, you can ask God for it. So let's say, for example, you're going through a situation where you have no clarity. You say, well, what am I supposed to do this? You can ask God for wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible says, if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom, and he will give it. The Bible would not say, and he might give it. No, the Bible says, if you long for wisdom, ask God for wisdom. And God will give you the wisdom. He will not set your lack of wisdom as an opportunity, opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. God will over, overwhelm failures where we have made mistakes. What with his generous grace? He stopped planting and said, oh, you did this yesterday. You did that yesterday. You did that two, two days ago. God saying, if you need wisdom, child, just ask me for wisdom. It's as simple as that. If there's anything that you don't understand, you know, it might be your academics, it might be in your work, it might be how to handle your colleagues, it might be how to relate with your family members, it might be how to deal with other people in your community. If there's anything that you don't understand, just say, Father, give me the wisdom on how to deal with this. In church this morning, I spoke about the kind of wisdom that most Joseph had that catapulted him from, uh, from, from, the, from the prison to the palace and from the palace to become the prime minister. It was just not enough that Joseph was able to say, oh, this is the meaning of the dreams to Pharaoh. Joseph also gave a practical application, practical action plan on what should be done to solve the problem. And that is the wisdom that you can pray for. 
So I've got some categories of wisdom. Now I want us to pray for today before we do the communion. So uh, as I go through, I'm going to call them out. I don't have them on the screen. I'm just going to call them. Then you can do the prayer yourself, you know, and after that, we'll kind of do the communion. So here the Bible says, if you, are, if you lack wisdom, ask for it. My prayer for you in the name of Jesus and my prayer for myself that in this month of the ascent wisdom of God, that the wisdom of God will lead us. The wisdom of God will guide us. The wisdom of God will help us. When the road seems to be, to be fuzzy and we don't know where to go, the wisdom of God will create a pathway for us on the way to go in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, if you are going on a journey, if you're going on a journey and you get lost somewhere, you get lost, you don't know where to go. And you, if there's a way you can call up and say, you can call up some sort of internal sat nav that can sort of give you the elevated view of where you are and the pathway out of the maze. That will be something that you will love to have with you all the time. The good thing is, God is that word, is that satna, is that internal satna that we can ask and talk to. And the way to ask God for wisdom is just to ask him in, just like you're having a, a chat with your best buddy. Just like you're having a chat with, with your father. Just like you're having a chat with somebody that you're close to, that you, there's no, there's, there's no um, hands between you. God wants you to come and ask and say, Daddy, what should I do here? If you're writing an exam, I'm going to pray for those who are writing exams. If you're writing for exam, for example, ask stuff for wisdom. Say, Lord, that guide me in the right way to go. Guide me in the right way to go. If you're if you're having challenges in in your in your in your um in your um uh, with your colleagues at work, ask God for wisdom. Say, God, what kind of ways should I should I go about it? I want to show you something here in James chapter three. James chapter three. I want to show you something that I, I, is 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 beautiful. The the first wisdom that we are going to pray for. This is uh, James chapter 3, verse, verse 17. Now, the Bible here says, I want you to see the heading from this Bible here. It says, wisdom from above. Wisdom from above. The wisdom that God desires for you to ask for. Okay. Now, let's look at what it says. It says, if you consider yourself to be wise and one who understands the ways of God, advertise it with a beautiful, fruitful life. Guided by wisdom's gentleness. Bible is saying saying there is a way in which you can advertise your life by the gentleness of wisdom. It says never brag or boast about what you have done, and you prove that you are truly wise. Really, God is saying, don't boast about yourself, don't boast about your achievement. That is one form of wisdom. A form of wisdom here that comes from above is the one wisdom that does not brag. And I'll say, look at me, look at what I've done, look at what I've look at what I've done. You know, that's the kind of wisdom that the world system promotes. But the wisdom from God doesn't parade itself, doesn't brag about itself. The wisdom of God is very, very gentle. Now, the Bible then says here in it says in verse 40, if there's bitter jealousy or competition hiding in your heart, then don't deny it and try to compensate for it by boasting and being phony. For that has nothing to do with the heavenly kind of wisdom, but can best be described as the wisdom of this world, both selfish and devilish. The Bible says there's a wisdom that this world system presents that is not the kind of wisdom that God presents. The wisdom of this world essentially is very boastful, very show offish. But the wisdom, the wisdom from God is not like that. The wisdom from God is very gentle. God is not a show of God. You know, God, God owns this universe. God owns everything in this world, but God never shows up. You know, like, oh, you just, you just show off like, um, like a peacock. No, God doesn't do that. God is a very gentle, very humble God. He owns everything, but he doesn't boast about it. And God is saying, we can ask for that wisdom. Now, verse 16 says, so wherever jealousy and selfishness are uncovered, you will also find many troubles and every kind of meanness. He's saying, when you see people being jealous of one another and they are self you know, thinking about themselves, you know, there will be many kind of challenges there. Now he says, verse 17, the wisdom from above is pure, filled with peace, considerate and teachable. It is filled with love and never displays prejudice or hypocrisy in any form. And it bears the fruit, the beautiful harvest of righteousness, Good seeds of wisdom fruit will be planted with peaceful acts by those who cherish making peace. I just say that what this is saying is this number one, wisdom that God wants you to ask for in this month is the wisdom that is from above that helps you in relationship with others. If you look in this here, it's, it's talking about where there's jealousy in verse 16, where there's jealousy and selfishness, which means that where there's rivalry among people. See, all manner of evil works, all manner of bad things happen there. See, but you can ask for wisdom 
from God that is always pure, that is filled with peace, that is considerate and teachable. So it is filled with love and never displays prejudice or hypocrisy. So the first prayer point here that I want us to pray is to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that Almighty God grant me the wisdom from above. Lord, I pray for your wisdom in this month to guide me. I pray for your wisdom this month to lead me. I pray for your wisdom this month to help me. I pray for your wisdom this month to help me. The wisdom that is pure, the wisdom that is peaceful, the wisdom that is considerate and teachable. Lord, help me, Almighty God, that when you speak to me, that your wisdom will lead me, help me to know what to do at the right time in the name of Jesus Christ. So begin to pray, Father, help me in my relationship. Help me in my, in my relationship, the way I relate to other people. That Lord Almighty God, you will guide me the right way to relate to my co workers, the people that I hang out with. So I will have the right word to speak at the right time in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, Almighty God, that the wisdom of God will lead me and guide me in the name of Jesus Christ. This month, I pray for the wisdom. To, to be led right by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your wisdom. Thank you, Father, for your power. Thank you, Father, for your grace. I receive this wisdom now in the way I speak, in the manner of my speech, in my conversation, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. The second prayer point is about wisdom for peace. Ask that the Lord will help you to be wise so that you can live a peace, a peace, a peaceable life. That's very important. You know, the Bible says we should pray to, to, to live in an environment of peace. You know, if there's no peace where you live, you know, there's things that maybe rockets are flying all over the place. You can't sleep properly at night. You're going to be as afraid. You know, but there's, there's a kind of wisdom that you can pray in for peace to rule in your life. So let us begin to pray to say, Father, I pray for your, for your wisdom that will lead me to live a peaceful life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask for wisdom even this afternoon, wisdom in the way we relate to other people, wisdom that will bring more peace into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, so that our conversations and the way we relate to other people, Father, will bring peace. I pray for wisdom, O Lord, that will foster peace, wisdom that will foster peace among people that are anger with in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right, we want to go to um proverbs proverbs chapter 3 verse 15 proverbs chapter 3 verse 15 the bible i'll start from verse 13 look at verse 10 it says blessings pour over the ones who find wisdom blessings pour over the ones who find wisdom for they have obtained living understanding. Blessings pour over the ones who find wisdom. So you can see here that when we act in wisdom, when we allow the wisdom of God to guide us, blessings pour over our lives. But remember, you are already blessed with all the blessings of God. This is talking about the practical outworking of that blessing in your life. So you are not begging God to be blessed. You're already blessed from the very moment you give a life to Jesus Christ, you are blessed. Blessing is already over you. But the Bible says there's a way in which you can have wisdom. Wisdom is primarily in how to relate to other people. Wisdom is also primarily in how to direct your life. So, for example, you might be in a situation whereby you're thinking, what kind of job should I do? Wisdom of God will guide you. You might be thinking, Lord, what kind of uh, spouse should I marry? Wisdom of God will guide you. You might be thinking, God, uh, what kind of uh, business should I enter into? Wisdom of God is able to guide you. And that's the reason why it's absolutely important for you when you wake up and you sleep. Throughout this month, I'm asking, let's just begin to say, Father, your wisdom is guiding me and leading me and helping me to make the right decision. I've told you before, I've lost money. I've lost money before, and I've prayed. I was praying, but I've lost, I still, I lost money because my heart was a bit fearful and I lost money. And if I had paid, paid attention, to some people in my life that God said, I was put in their heart to say, don't do that kind of business. I probably wouldn't have lost the money, all right? So we need, every one of us need wisdom. You know, you see, there's nobody here who knows everything. And that's the reason why the wisdom of God will guide us. There's a scripture in Proverbs Pro 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 chapter 16. I won't be able to go there. It talks about the fact that I'm so grateful for the way you counsel me in the middle of the night. This is the, the psalmist was talking about how God counsels in the middle of the night, as he was sleeping, God would be telling him what to do. Some of you here, God may have shown you dreams about things to that might, is about to happen in your life or about to happen in the life of your 
uh, of people that you work with or people that are close to you. That is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God shows you things ahead of time so that you can prepare for them. You remember the story of Joseph? It was the wisdom of God that allowed Joseph to be able to interpret what God was about to do and what to do about it. So at times, God shows you something. Now you can do some things about them. So blessings pour over the ones who find wisdom, for they have obtained living understanding. So here, the prayer I want us to pray is to say, Father, I walk in your wisdom, and therefore blessings follow me. Father, I walk in your wisdom, and therefore blessings follow me. In the name of Jesus. Father, this month, I thank you, Almighty God, that I am walking in your wisdom. I am walking in your wisdom. I'm walking in your living understanding. Therefore, your blessings pour over me. Your blessings surround me in the name of Jesus Christ. Wisdom of God is guiding me. The wisdom of God is leading me. The wisdom of God is helping me in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Verse 14 says, as wisdom increases, a great treasure is imparted greater than many bars of refined gold. Now, I don't know whether it was here, I'll show this, or maybe I'll show you my children. I said, if, if there are problems in the, in the office and God gives you this wisdom to solve problems that other people cannot solve, people will want to come to you to associate with you. They might not like your diction, they might not like your accent, they might not like the way you, you do whatever, but because you have something that they don't have, they will come to you. So the Bible essentially is saying there is a great treasure when wisdom increases in your life. It might be maybe you're in school, you're a student right now, right? And you begin to say, Father, give me your wisdom. Father, help me to have wisdom. Wisdom that will set me apart in my generation. Begin to pray that prayer sincerely. If from this age, maybe you are 10 now or 12 or 15 or say 17, I begin to pray this kind of prayer now. You say, Father, let your wisdom guide me. Make that a sincere prayer in your heart. I tell you one thing, what will happen? By the time you are 20 or 21, you are going to have the kind of wisdom that are far, far, far more than people that are even your age means. You are going to operate at a higher level of wisdom. You know, and that is the gift of God. So here I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, your great treasure is imparted to me in the name of Jesus, that your wisdom is increasing in my life. Your wisdom is increasing in my life and great treasure is imparted to me. This month, your wisdom increases in my life in the name of Jesus and great treasure is imparted to me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, this morning, I thank you that I'm operating in the wisdom of God. Increased wisdom of God is mine to work with, to use in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I decree and declare great treasure is imparted to me now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I thank you. Oh Lord, I give you praise. I thank you almighty God for your treasure is imparted to me because your wisdom is increasing in my life. I know what to do. I know what to do in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm at the right place at the right time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, heavenly father. Lord, I give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, heavenly father. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 15 says, wisdom is a more valuable commodity than gold and gemstones. For there's nothing you desire that could compare to her. It's essentially saying, there's nothing you, you want in this life that can be compared to wisdom. And that statement is almost like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about that there's nothing I want that can be compared to, to wisdom? What do you mean? The Bible says, Wisdom will set you apart. The wisdom of God will set you apart. The wisdom of God will put money in your bank account. The wisdom of God will give you the right kind of job. The wisdom of God will make your life to be wonderful. The Bible here says your, the wisdom of God is a more valuable commodity than gold and gemstones. Some people at times, you know, they go and rob the banks. They go and do nasty stuff to get access to gemstones and gold. But the Bible says actually wisdom is more, is more valuable than gold and gemstones. And and, and in, in our world today, in the wisdom of the world today, that's stupidity. It's like, what do you mean? What do you mean that is is more valuable? Well, that's what God is saying. God is saying to you that we should pursue wisdom. That because when you pursue wisdom, wisdom will give you the right access to have things that money cannot buy. You know, I, I was talking to my wife the other day, I was saying there are some people that are so valuable in this life that even when some of these politicians want to come to power, they go talk to them first. The, polit the people that they go talk to, they might not have as much money as the politicians, but the politicians understand the level of influence that they have. That's why influence is more than money. 
influence is worth more than money. So if it is money that money is pursuing, but when somebody is not pursuing influence, the person has missed the road. Because when you have influence, influence will get you something that money cannot get you. Influence will get you some kind of, kind of access where money cannot get it. So that's the reason why God wants you to, to prioritize getting wisdom. Bible says in that Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, right? Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom, get understanding. Because when you get wisdom, the wisdom of God that explains things to you, and then you have understanding of what God asks you to do, then you can take action. Because the one who founded the universe by his own wisdom is giving you the, 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 the wisdom that is, that is subsumed in the universe that you can work with. Imagine if God has set laws in place and principles in place that can change your life or that are fundamental principles of the universe and you learn to cooperate with them. It will help you because you will not live your life in frustration. There are principles of God, for example, in the book of Genesis, that whether you're born again or not born again, when you cooperate with those principles, they will work for you. Okay? Why? Because God had wired the universe with those principles. One of such principles is every seed produces a tie scar. Praise God. So it's more valuable commodity than gold and gemstone. Begin to say, Father, this month, I desire, I desire your wisdom in the name of Jesus. I desire wisdom more than I've ever heard. Let your wisdom lead me and guide me. Let your wisdom, Father, lead me and guide me. Let your wisdom, Almighty God, lead me and guide me. Tell me what to do. Lead me in the right direction. I know what to say. I know who to hang out with in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me to be at the right place, at the right time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, I want you to look at verse 16. This is the one that is so beautiful. The Bible here says, wisdom extends to you long life in one hand and wealth and promotion in the other. Oh, wisdom extends to you long life in the one hand and wealth and promotion in the other. Let me give you an example of wisdom. I think I mentioned it again in church today. Wisdom says to you, don't become an alcoholic. Don't just be drinking and drinking and you lose control. The wisdom of the world says, man, you're foolish and stupid. If you don't drink and, and mess yourself up, go to the car bus and do this stuff, you know, you know what? You're, you're missing out. The wisdom of the world is telling you that, that it's okay to drink until you, until you can't control yourself. The wisdom of God is saying to you, when you drink and you lose your self-control, you lose the ability to perceive what is going on around you. The person then ignores the wisdom of God continues on down the pathway of just drinking and drinking and then becomes an alcoholic and then he has maybe cirrhosis of the liver, liver, liver no longer functions and the person dies. They say, ah, but the person is a child of God. What happened there? But you have not listened to the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God extends to you long life in one hand and wealth and promotion in the other. Let us pray. I say, Father, I thank you, Lord, that your wisdom is granting me length of days, length of days, long life to me. I decree long life by the unction of the Holy Ghost. I decree long life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, your wisdom is teaching me on how to take care of myself in the name of Jesus Christ so that I can live a long, fruitful life in the name of Jesus Christ. Your wisdom is teaching me, oh God, on the ideas that I can have, oh God, to take care of my own body, to take care of my mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that this month, your wisdom is guiding me. Your wisdom is leading me. Your wisdom is helping me to take care of my body and my mind. What I expose my mind to, what I expose my body to. I thank you that you are guiding me and you are leading me in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. The other part here says wealth and promotion in the other. The Bible says to us that promotion does not come from the, uh, from the north or from the south. Or promotion comes from the Lord. The Bible says, essentially tells us that God is the one who promotes. And as I said in the church this morning, it is the wisdom of God that Joseph possessed when he presented this solution to Pharaoh that promoted him. This one, I want you to pray carefully and say, Father, this month, I received wisdom for wealth and promotion. Now, people of God, I want to explain to you something. You know, I church, before I'm going to be talking about prosperity in, in the second half of this year. I want you to understand it, it is absolutely important for you to prosper. It's absolutely important because if you don't, you have little influence in this world. So don't let anybody tell you it's okay to be poor, you can do whatever. No, that's wrong. That's no, that's not correct. You know, so therefore, ask God and say, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive ideas. 
ideas for wealth, ideas for innovation, ideas for creativity that will promote me and give me wealth in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I give you praise and I thank you this evening in the name of Jesus Christ that your wisdom is guiding me. Give me wealth creating ideas in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give me creativity, products to create, things to do, Lord, that will set me apart in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive unction. I receive understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you that your wisdom, oh Lord, is setting me apart. The wisdom and the idea, Father, for wealth and promotion is not given to me. In this month of June, I will walk in that consciousness. I will walk in that consciousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. The Bible here says, out of our mouth flows righteousness, and our words release both law and mercy. Mercy is kindness. Mercy is kindness. This one, the prayer here is, Father, I thank you that this month, I will exhibit the kindness of God to everyone. I will exhibit the kindness of God to everyone. Imagine people in your office that may not know Jesus. You know what would drop people to Jesus more than what the world we preach? is our behavior, the way we behave, the way we relate to other people. That's what would draw people more to Jesus, even than, than giving tracts in, in, in the streets. Our lifestyle is important. So begin to say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your wisdom help me, oh God, to be somebody who shows mercy, who shows kindness in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me, Almighty God, to be the fragrance of the Holy Ghost everywhere that I go. Almighty God, help me, oh God, to show mercy and kindness, oh Lord, in everywhere that I go in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me to be someone that would display your ability, your goodness and kindness in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 17. The Bible says the ways of wisdom are sweet, always drawing you into the place of wholeness. This is so good. The Bible here is saying when you begin to apply this wisdom that God is grant, has granted you today, the, your ways will be sweet, number one, and you will come into a place of wholeness. I think that's a prayer that somebody should say amen to. To say, Father, my ways are sweet, my life is whole. My, my ways are sweet, my life is whole. Let's make our affirmation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree that my ways are sweet. My ways are sweet, my life is whole. My life is whole in the name of Jesus. Nothing broken, nothing missing. In the name of Jesus, Father, I decree and declare that my ways are sweet in the name of Jesus and my, way, my life is whole in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. The last verse here says, seeking for her, that seeking for wisdom, brings the discovery of untold blessing. For she is the healing tree of life to those who taste her fruit. So we have two prayers here. Number one, it's about the fact that this month I will come into untold blessing. Let me explain what, you, what an untold blessing is. An untold blessing is something that you are not working for. You know, they said to you, it is not possible. God will just make something happen for you. That's an untold blessing. Something that you're not, you're not even thinking that it was going to happen. You're not even putting your mind to it. But it just shows up. I want you to pray for that. Pray to say, Father, Lord, this month I will enter in, on, into untold blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ, whether it's in my finances, in my health, in my education, in my career, Lord, this month I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost that will enter into untold blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that your wisdom will lead me to untold blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. The final point here is this is the healing tree of life to those who taste that. Here is a prayer for anyone who desires healing that this month God will surprise you, that God will surprise you powerfully in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we speak healing by the power of the Holy Ghost. The wisdom of God will bring healing to your body. The wisdom of God will bring healing to your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak life over you today in the name of Jesus Christ, that every one of you here on the call and those who might listen to this recording later, that there will be an impartation of the Holy Ghost to bring healing wholeness into your life, that the shalom of God will speak for you, that nothing will be broken, nothing will be missing in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Either to, if you have struggled, 
we bring an end to such struggle in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that this month only good things shall be spoken of about you in the name of Jesus Christ. The wisdom of God will set you apart. The wisdom of God will lead you in the right path in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of the Most High God will rest upon you in new dimension. The wisdom of God, the wisdom that is peaceable, the wisdom that is from God, that is peaceable, that is easily entreated, is yours to enjoy in the name of Jesus Christ. You will know more than you more than your age in the name of Jesus Christ. God will grant you wisdom far beyond your age in the name of Jesus Christ. God grants you favor in the sight of God, in the sight of men, in the name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere that you go, the presence of God will showcase you to the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Your gift shall make room for you. Every gift that's laid, that's laid hidden in your life, that's either to not be used, today we resurrect, we bring to the forefront in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that the Spirit of God will carry you in the name of Jesus Christ. God himself will strengthen you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will receive help from uncommon quarters. You will receive help from uncommon quarters. The wisdom of God will lead and direct you and guide you by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So it's time for the communion. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 24, verse 23, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we take this bread that represents the body of Jesus Christ, and we remember that Christ has died for us. We remember that by his stripes we have been healed. We remember that his body was broken so that ours would never be broken. We remember tonight that Christ was buried and he was raised from the dead after the third day. We remember today that Christ is our substitute. We remember today that Christ is our redemption. We remember today that Christ is our holiness. We remember today that Christ is our sanctification. We remember today that Christ is our wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. So therefore, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, as we partake of this, body, this bread that represents the body of Christ, we, we declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that the wisdom of God is released afresh in our minds, in our bodies, in our, in our situation, afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. In every area of our life, the wisdom of God will begin to speak for us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. You can take the bread. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in verse, verse 25, and after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had sought sin. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death, death till it comes. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we are reminded to today, O oh God, that this blood represents the token of the new covenant. Because of the blood of Jesus, we have access to everything that God has. Lord, therefore, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Almighty God, for the provision of the blood that still speaks today over our lives. We thank you for the blood that has washed us in. We thank you for the blood that speaks healing and wellness and wholesomeness and shalom over our lives. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible that speaks of a better thing than the blood of Abel. This blood speaks peace. This blood speaks mercy. This blood speaks compassion. This blood speaks love. Lord, we thank you that we are forever loved. By the blood of by the by we are forever loved by God through the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the word of God that never fails. We give you praise and we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, as a partake of this wine representing the body of the blood of Jesus, we thank you that this wine goes into our blood cells, replace every defectiveness there, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that this month, Almighty God, we will walk in divine healing, divine health in Jesus' name. We thank you, Almighty God, for acceleration of healing for those who might be needing healing right now. We thank you, Almighty God, for perfection. Thank you for blood cells that you are, you are, you are fixing. Thank you, Almighty God, for eyesight that you are fixing. Thank you, Almighty God, for, for the brain of someone here that you are fixing in the name of Jesus Christ. As we partake of this, Father, we thank you that this will nourish our bodies and nourish our minds in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. You can take the wine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you tonight. Thank you, Almighty God, for ways in which you have helped us. Lord, this is our month of the ascent wisdom of God. This wisdom will lead us this month. Yes, thank you that your wisdom will help us in how to manage our family life, in how to manage ourselves, not to manage the ministry, not to manage the job you have given us, not to manage our businesses, not to manage our relationships, not to manage things in our lives, in how to manage our health. Lord, thank you that your wisdom is guiding us, all Mario, in terms of invention and creativity and what to do. This month will be productive in the name of Jesus. This month will be effective in the name of Jesus Christ. This month will be efficient in the name of Jesus Christ. This month, all Mary God. Wealth untold blessings are coming to us in the name of Jesus Christ. This is a great month. This is a wonderful month. This is a beautiful month in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare it. We believe it. We receive it. We walk in it. Lord, as we live here, oh Lord, help us, oh Lord, to guard our mouths from speaking words that contradict what we have believed you for. We thank you for this and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God forevermore.